An Oakland gas station manager is expressing anger and frustration today after dozens of people ransacked his business overnight. And to make matters worse, he says police never showed up after he called for help. Happened at the 76 station on Hagenberger Road near 880, just up the street from the airport. ABC 7 News anchor Dion Lim explains how it all unfolded. This is simply incredible. Station manager Sam Marde says he has never seen anything like it. It all began at about 4.30 this morning when a crowd attending a nearby sideshow broke in and began ransacking and looting the place. Marde believes some 80 to even 100 people took part, apparently unhappy that they weren't allowed inside. The station only offering window service, normal for that time of night. The shelves were ripped apart. All the grocery items were torn or stepped on or vandalized. They broke the, the refrigerators. They robbed our ATM, tore the ATM apart, took everything in it. They tried to get the safe, but it was more secure than anything else, so they couldn't get through that. Basically, every single thing, even the TV. Marde estimates that the damage and theft totals more than $100,000. We reached out to Oakland police for a comment about Marde's claims about the response, but we have yet to hear back. This, of course, is just the latest in a series of issues on the Hagenberger Corridor. On Wednesday, police turned out in force after reports of a shooting at Chevron. Sky 7 spotted a car with its rear window blown out. And this is also the same area where an In-N-Out burger closed in March due to ongoing crime, a first for that popular chain. All right, guys. So yesterday I talked about this pretty tragic story out of Memphis, Tennessee, involving a pastor that was shot in the face. And the charges got dropped because witnesses failed to show up to testify against one of the individuals that was allegedly involved in the shooting. Uh, and in my video, I stated that there are a list of cities in this country that I just refuse to visit. I'm just not going to visit for any reason. I don't care what the reason is. I'm not going, okay? Memphis is on the list. Oakland, aka Wokeland, is also on the list, okay? And stories like this are exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> in regards to reasons why I will never visit this city, okay? Because this city is being run by agents of chaos okay criminals have taken over the city they can do whatever they want and because police have been defunded because police have been demonized there's a severe shortage of police officers who are available to respond to situations like this where you have a bunch of young scholars aka agents of chaos go into this gas station and completely raid the gas station after being upset that the gas station wouldn't allow them in okay they were only doing service from the outside okay you got to walk up to the window tell them what you want the manager goes and gets what you want and brings it to you right because he doesn't want people coming into the store stealing and walking out right that is typically what happens and this store manager was shocked and upset devastated at the police failed to respond to this gas station raid that in my opinion was an emergency situation i mean they were destroying this store from top to bottom and police just didn't show up right and uh yeah this is what i'm talking about in regards to the problem with this country as a whole in these liberal cities which is the george fortification of these cities which has led to this right so without further ado let's get into it frustration and disbelief a gas station in oakland raided by dozens of robbers the owner says police are not responding until several hours later wow things has to be fixed somehow things has to be the, the the citizen of Oakland has to have some security. Well, I mean, who did you vote for? <laughs> right. That would be my first question. That would be my follow-up question. Who did you vote for? Did you vote for Tao? Okay. Did you vote for uh, Pamela Price? Who did you vote for? That's what I want to know. If Oakland wants to be fixed, if Memphis wants to be fixed, if Chicago wants to be fixed, if Philadelphia wants to be fixed, if San Francisco wants to be fixed, if Portland wants to be fixed, if any of these liberal cities want to be fixed, then the first thing they have to do is start voting in the opposite direction, right? They have to move away from this progressivism, okay? You got to move away from it. But as long as they continue to embrace progressivism, this will always be a problem. It's only going to get worse. 
Thankfully, no one working in that store was heard. So far, no arrests have been reported. Good evening on this Friday. I'm Christina Rendon. And I'm Christian Kaft. And it all happened early this morning on Hegenberger Road in Oakland. New at 10, KTVU's Amber Lee spoke with the gas station's owner about what happened during that robbery and the changes he now says he wants to see. Right, Amber? That's right, Christian. The owner tells me he's sharing his story and sharing the surveillance video to let everyone know how bad things have gotten, and he's demanding action. Surveillance video shows a brazen flash mob style robbery of the 76 gas station mini market on Hagenberger Road in Oakland. It happened early Friday morning around 4 o'clock. Dozens of people ransacked the store. Owner Sam Marday tells me the free for all lasted about 40 minutes. This is the hardest thing you could ever go through, you know, especially you, you, if you've been put in sweat and tears day in, day out. This 24-hour business was offering only window service during the overnight hours. But Marday says the thieves broke in through the front door while two employees were inside. You can see the shattered glass right here. This is the way they entered. He shared this video of the damage left by the thieves. They emptied shelves and display cases of merchandise, along with cash totaling $25,000 from the register and the ATM that had just wow. been filled for the holiday weekend. Wow. Marday says he and his family had just taken over this business last August. Building wow. yourself for the last 10 months and then you're back to square one. He tells me he is aware that this area is a hotspot for thieves because of its proximity to the Oakland airport and travelers are considered easy targets. I did not think it's this terrible. I thought maybe once every blue moon. Marday suspects- I mean, again, that's the problem, homeboy. You went and bought a business in a terrible area, okay? I wonder how much he bought this business for. If he actually had to buy it to take over, I'm not entirely sure, but assuming that he did buy it from somebody else, um, the original seller, the original owner, uh, found a sucker, right? He was like, oh yeah, I'll sell this to you, okay? Because businesses, people are leaving Oakland, okay? They are evacuating the city. So again, this guy went and bought a gas station in an area where you have uh, in and out leaving, right? They say, hey, crime is so bad, we gotta get out of here, we gotta go. I did a story about the Hilton Hotel in this same area saying, hey, we gotta go, we gotta leave, crime is too bad. So this guy, he bought a gas station in his area and he didn't expect for something like this to happen? This is probably one of the worst areas in the country to buy a business, and this is what I'm talking about, guys. Businesses cannot thrive when you have high crime, when you have too much crime. When people talk about empowerment and trying to bring jobs to the black community, trying to help the black community, it starts with being tough on criminals. It starts with locking up criminals and getting them off the streets. You have to clean up the streets completely. Capitalism works when criminals are in jail, okay? A lot of these people think that capitalism is the problem. No, capitalism is not the problem. The problem are the criminals, okay? Clean up the criminals. And capitalism works. These neighborhoods will thrive if you get all the criminals off the street. Okay? It's really that simple. But until you get the criminals off the street, I don't care how much you invest in these communities. It's only going back to the criminals. Right? No business is going to want to operate in an area like this where you have to worry about this type of nonsense. And then on top of that, if it happens, the police don't show up. These people were robbing this store in slow motion. Okay? They knew. They were like, hey, we can go in here, take our time. Right? Get into... The cash register, they even got into the ATM. Guys, how long do you think it took for them to get in that ATM? They had a whole 40 minutes. It's not easy to break into an ATM, okay? But they broke into the ATM, so they know they had time. Police didn't show up for hours later. And you wonder why this continues to happen. Do you think that this was reported? Do you think that all of these individuals that just stole this stuff, do you think this is being counted in the crime statistics? Probably not, right? Probably not. If it is counted, it goes down as just one incident. But in reality, because there were 60 to 100 people involved, so it seems, you actually have 100 incidences because you have all these people stealing stuff, right? And that's the problem with these crime statistics that Democrats keep citing, saying that, oh, crime is down. It's a right-wing conspiracy that crime is out of control. Well, again, when you're not counting stuff like this, like it should be counted, then yeah, it's going to seem like crime is down. Even though crime is not down because a lot of these groups, these criminals, they're moving 
as mobs. So when you count one mob incident as one crime, even though you have hundreds of people involved, again, it's going to skew things. Okay. So the problem here is the fact that police did not show up, even though these people were here for 40 minutes and they know about it. This is why they're emboldened to do it because they know that police are not going to respond in time and they're not going to face any consequences. Even if they get caught, they're going to get a slap on the wrist. And until this is fixed, you're going to continue to have these same problems and businesses are going to leave. There's going to be less tax revenue for the city, which means less money to pay and recruit police, which just leads to more crime like this, which will lead to more businesses leaving, which will lead to less tax revenue, which will lead to less police. Again, it's just a domino effect that never stops. And it's because of these progressive policies. That is what is happening here, guys. The thieves are people who participated in a sideshow in the area. He says police did not respond to the robbery until almost nine hours later. It's very wow. disheartening. I'm scared to go out after dark, and I don't know. I just, I, it's, it, it, it's alarming. While we were at the store Friday afternoon, a police unit pulled up and parked in the lot. We were told it is part of the violence suppression unit stationed at known crime hotspots. Yeah, yeah, let's pull up in the middle of the day when the crime is already done. The store is empty, right? There ain't nothing else to steal. Yeah, let's pull up and let's protect the store now, right? Let's be here now. Wow. Wow, this is shameful. It really is. City Council member Treva Reed, who represents the area, issued a statement saying, in part, I continue to advocate and work to secure increased public safety resources and response, urging the mayor to prioritize our district's demands. Well, as of right now, we don't see any improvements. Not even a little bit. Hopefully, you know, the right people will hear this message and start making the right moves, you know, to save the city. What are you going to do now moving forward? Rebuild and pray. Well, you also need to vote, right? You need to vote in the opposite direction, okay? You need to get Shane Tao up out of there. You need to get Pamela Price up out of there. You need to get uh, your woke city council up out of there, Right? That's also what you need to do. You need to take some action, okay? Because that's what's going to have to happen in order to turn this around. Otherwise, you're not going to see any improvement. Council member Reed says more does need to be done and that those involved must be identified and held accountable. We also reached out to Oakland police. They've just gotten back to me. They say investigators are now re reviewing evidence. Christian. Shocking video, Amber. Thank yeah. So, again, terrible situation. Uh, another story <laughs> basically demonstrating how uh, Oakland is a shithole, okay? It is really one of the worst cities in this country. It is a city that I have no interest whatsoever in visiting, okay? And part of the reason why is because of the crime. And that is what leads to a city losing tax revenues, giant deficits, and then less police, less public services, less... Uh, prosperous neighborhoods, okay, less economic op opportunities is because of crime. When people start to understand it, when you start to understand that you cannot be soft on crime, okay, capitalism works best when you're tough on crime. When you realize that and you understand that, that's when you can actually make change. But again, these people hate capitalism, right? The people are running the city, okay, and this is why they demonize police. And they don't seem to value the businesses, the small businesses in this city, right? This is why they tax them to death and stuff like that. Again, it's just a top-down disaster in the city, and it's not going to change until these people start to vote in the right direction, okay? But until then, hey, it is what it is. This is what you got to deal with. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.